Epic tier list. Let's check who are the strongest epic heroes on Dragonhair's Silent Gods. Let's go. Hello guys, Wilson Box here, and this time we are here to check who are the strongest epic heroes on Dragonhair's Silent Gods. So for this job, I'm gonna use a website called Tire Maker. I created all these images. We can give a tier S, S, S plus, S, A plus, A, B plus, and B. And this way I'm gonna do a breakdown for every epic hero on this game. I'm going to do a brief explanation of the skills of each hero and then I'm gonna give you a rank. And with this website will be easier for you guys if you want to check the tier list I made. So I'm gonna leave the link below that you can check. You also can vote for the tier list. So you can vote if you agree or disagree with the ranking I'm giving to each hero. And on the description you can also find the actual tier list for each hero. So if you don't want to check this website, you can directly go to the description and check which rank is the hero that you are looking for. So without wasting more time, let's check all the epic heroes you can find in Dragon Earth. This is only an epic tier list. Probably this video is gonna take a while because I'm going to check every hero, hero. So you can fast forward this just to if you just want to know what is the, um, the final tier list like all completed or you can just check the link below uh, it's alright but if you want to have like an overview of each epic hero just stay tuned stay there and let's go so starting with poison heroes we have Horus let's check Horus Horus he's got his aura enlightenment aura then his ultimate he deals poison damage he applies poison he triggers a poison explosion battle skill Earls a poison bomb by the targets and what else with a 50% chance of lifting poison when they reduce damage to enemy under poison every stack of poison that target creates one crit rate of this damage so he's not that bad but he only does basically damage and increases the crit rate so I don't think it's that great so I would say he's like a B to B plus I'll give him a B plus then we have Echoes. Echoes is much better. She can do poison damage, has a 35% chance of inflict charm, and 85% of inflicting recharging speed penalty, and then she can dispel one debuff for, from all the eyelids. And if you increase the chance with scrolls, you get 100% chance of recharging speed penalty. So she's really good. Just on the ultimate skills, she can do a lot of stuff. She applies damage, recharging speed penalty with 100% chance if you spend crawls, scrolls, and dispel one debuff from all allies, which is really good. And charm as well, but will be around 50% chance. Then, battle skills, she can apply poison damage and healing prohibition. So, if you scrolls again, you're gonna get 100% chance of healing prohibition, which is good. And then, when inflicting debuffs on enemies, reduce their damage deal by 10% at the same time. So, she's really great. Um, I don't really know if I would put her on an A+, plus or S tier. Uh, she could be a S tier, I think so. In some contents, she could be a S tier, but I'll leave her on an A+. Plus because each hero, hero really depends on what content you're playing. But on a general view, I think she will be a, a plus. If you don't agree, don't remember, you can vote uh, if you agree with some some of the decisions I'm making or not. Then we have Sour. Sour, he refresh the duration of poison on one enemy, then triggers poison explosion one time and spreads the poison, poison to nearby enemies and deals poison damage. Battle skill, launch three venomous attacks on the nearest enemy, Poison damage with a 75% chance of inflicting poison. And then, when an enemy fleet with poison dies, their poison spreads to nearby enemies and deal poison damage to them. And then, an enlightenment aura that only works on City of Trails battles. So, this one, I uh, think, is not so great. This aura only works on City of Trails. He only does damage and poison. So, it can boost the poison damage. If you are not playing with a poison team, I don't know if it will be that great. So he only does damage and amplifies that damage. I'll say he's like a B to B plus, but I'll give him a B. 
Then we have the great Frobert. So everyone knows this guy. He's great. He's almost a legendary. So he deals poison damage to enemies within rage with 75% chance of lithic attack penalty too. If you use the scrolls, you're gonna get 100%. Then he can generate healing nexus around the hero, and this is gonna heal a lot. And this passive, when dealing damage to enemies under debuffs, the hero has a 30% chance of healing the ally with the lowest HP and dispelling one debuff from them. The more debuffs on the targets, the higher the healing amount. And he also has a defense that which is which is 24% in dungeon battles, so it's good dungeon battles. So I would say Frobert it's like an S because it, you can use him like in almost all the content on dungeons, uh, my my feather PvP. I mean, he's really versatile and really great. You can heal, uh, defense. You can apply the attack penalty. I think he's really a S tier. Then we're going to Sifris. So Sifris, she can consume 30% of heroes current HP and resurrects two random allies at 30% of their max HP, retaining 75% of the resurrected allies' ultimate energy before that. Then grants defense up to all heal allies, and then she consumes 10% of the heroes current HP to heal all the other allies. And passive, when the hero's HP drops below 30%, for the first time gains resurrection at death. So she's she's good because she can resurrect everyone. She can resurrect two random allies, so eh, we never know. If, if we have like three or four dead allies, we don't know who she's gonna resurrect. But they're gonna get 30% of their max HP. Defense up, so I think she's really good, but I never used her. So I would say it's between an A plus and S, but I'll give her uh, A plus. But if I use her, so these two I never used them. I could change my mind, but at the moment I'll give them an A plus. So then we have Chink. I don't have him as well. But let's check his skills. He strikes enemies within rage 5 times, dealing poison damage each time, with a 70% chance of inflicting 1 stack of poison on them. Then battle skill throws a dagger that bounces between enemies up to 5 times, dealing 100% 5 attack. Uh, poison damage upon hit, with a 70% chance of inflicting 1 stack of poison. And then, when attacking enemies inflicting with poison, the target it's the target's 1% defense is not for every stack of poison they have. So this one it can really do a big damage. Uh, especially I've been seen using this one on PvP and it really do, does a really amount big amount of damage. I love these daggers, they remember me the Illidan Glaives from WoW. So yeah, I think I'll give him a A. Hey. I think he's an A. So, for you guys know, I've just checked, I checked all the heroes before. Uh, I've been checking them all before doing this tier list. So, the tier list is kind of already done. So, I'm just doing a breakdown for all the heroes. So, you guys understand better my decisions. Even if then, we have Garret. Garret, he can deal poison damage to enemies between rage with a 70%, 75% damage that can be 100% with the scrolls. It's always important to know this because some of the heroes they can apply these debuffs but it may, if you use scrolls you can't reach the 100% chance so it's important to know that. Then the heroes can defense up to for 5 seconds and strike the enemy dealing defense damage and reduce the poison damage Apply, uh, based on defense and reduce the damage taken from that enemy by 30%. And then passive skill when the hero takes damage that exceeds 20% of their max HP in a single hit gains healing equal of 50% of the damage. So this one, I don't like this area because uh, I like when it's around the hero, but that's fine, it's a melee hero. Um, and then we have the pass, the battle skill is single target. I never used him, I never saw, I don't think I ever saw someone using him, 
but it looks it looks okay. It does some debuffs, some damage, some buffs. So I would say is um is a hey. A tier. Next one, we have a healer. It's Garion. Garion can generate a healing nexus in a hairy. It's a big area, by the way. For 8 seconds, healing ally is within your range by 1% target's max HP and 350% alignment. So if you use the right gear, you can heal a lot. He also can heal the ally with the lowest HP and granting the buff immunity and passive for each ally with less than 50% HP on the field, Dero gains one stack of recharging speed boost. And on the top of that, for each ally with less than 20% of the field, Dero gains an extra shot for recharging speed boost. And this means it's going to increase the recharging speed by 5 or 10%. Then our uh, has max HP, but only works on City of Thrills, so it's not that great. So I think he's, he's good. He's a good healer, I think he works pretty well, I've been using him on some of the content, not every every content because I mainly play with Lightning Radius Heroes, but I think he's good. So I would say he's uh, A tier. Then we have Vikuk. So Vikuk dispels two debuffs from all allies, so he can dispel, listen to this, two debuffs from all allies. He heals them by 15% HP, and for each debuff successfully dispelled on an ally, the healing on that ally is increased by 25%, so imagine this on Grave of Rot. Then, Battle Skill, he can do poison damage to enemies within range with the 75% chance of flick attack penalty too. And then, so he can apply its healer, and he can also apply attack penalty. When passive, whenever he receives a flick with a debuff, death, there is a 100% uh, chance of a flick accuracy penalty. So I think he's really good, especially this ultimate, it's amazing. This ultimate is really amazing for removing debuffs. So for that reason, since it's so important to remove debuffs on some of the content, I would say is A+. So, next, we have Theodore. Theodore, his ultimate skill does a poison damage with this area, with enrage with a 70% chance of a fleeting stun, that can be 75, and 50% chance of a fleeting attack penalty, that can increase to 75, so yeah, it's not what I want, <laughs> I always want the 100%, because 75%, you never know what you're gonna get. Then you can shoot two arrows at the enemy with a 75% chance that can be 100 inflicting charging speed penalty and passive when the enemy is inflicted with control grants 10% ultimate energy so this means when he applies this stun he's gonna get 10% ultimate energy to the ally with the highest attack when ally is afflicted with control the ultimate energy of the enemy with the highest attack is reduced by 20% and it has a uh, accuracy aura of 50 on in dungeon battles, so yeah, that's good. But I mean, this 75% attack penalty—it's uh, I mean, I don't like it. Uh, you can get a 100% sh charging speed, but I don't love it either. So I have him. I've played with him. So I'll I'll think will be. An A. For me it's an A. Alright, so this is the the ranking for Poison Heroes. Rubert, amazing. I would say Echoes and this one will be almost an S and maybe this one as well. But I don't know, I never use them. I would say they are uh, A plus at least, maybe an S. Then we are going to check the Ice Heroes. So, Ice Heroes, we, we are starting with this one, Dorkuras. So, Dorkuras, it throws Ice spell dealing cold damage, enemies within rage, gains 15% attack up, opening enemies with under frost, battle skill it deals this damage to enemies within a range of 75% chance, 
of Athletic Frost for 5 tech seconds and recharge ultimate energy by 25. Basic attacks have a 60% chance of dealing derivate cold damage and defeating frost on the target for 5 seconds. Prioritize attacks on the enemy, not under frost. So I've been seeing some people saying he's an A, but I don't think so. Like, he's not bad, but he deals ice damage. Okay, for a ice, a frost team, I think he's good, but besides that, he can only do this buff, besides the damage, he can only do a buff, inflict frost, and a buff is just for himself, so I'll give him a B+. But I know some people they're saying he's uh, 8 tier, but I'll say a B+. Plus. Then I have Vidimir. Vidimir, we start with uh, this, aura. this aura, it's an attack aura, 24% in all battles, which is really good. Then, one enemy is deflated with frost dice, gains 25% attack up, and recharges ultimate energy by 15%. So this one is really good for the goblin lair. Battle skill deals cold damage to enemies within range with a 75% chance of fleeting frost, which can be 100%. And this ultimate release an ice ball that can bounce up to 5 times between enemies, so this is really good for most of the content. Not for dungeons, maybe, the, like the boss stage. The ice ball is more likely to hit the enemies if lit with frost. When the enemies hit frost are hit, their frost will be removed and cause an explosion on the spot to deal full damage to nearby, nearby enemies. So this is good if you have a uh, frost team, but if you don't have a frost team, it will be also good. Because it can afflict frost, 100% chance. And you can gain this attack up when a frost enemy, if, uh, an enemy with frost dies. And with his aura, I think he's really good, and I would say he's uh, A tier. Next, we have Sovelis. Sovelis has a aura in all battles, 40 accuracy, which is good. Passive, when enemies afflict with invisibility, shots an arrow to them, dealing full damage and remove their invisibility, with a 100% chance of inflicting attack penalty too on them for 5 seconds. So this is good for the enemies you know uh, they're gonna turn invisible so there is some of the content that you can find some enemies or bosses that can turn invisible so that will be good but you don't have that much hero content where they turn invisible so yeah it's good it's great but it's not amazing. Battle skill, it he can heal Zanali by 10% and grants him hit recovery for 5 seconds. And the ultimate fires 2 rounds of Hail of Arrows, dealing cold damage to enemies within range with a 50% chance of reducing their ultimate energy by 30%. So this is this is good, but not great. You Still with scrolls you're gonna have 65% chance. So good, not amazing. So Sufelis, I think he will be an A as well. There's a lot of tire A heroes because they are epic, so they're never gonna be that bad. They always the stats will always be higher than a rare hero, so that's the reason. Then we have our late thunder is ultimate he deal they can deal cold damage to enemies in rage with a 70% chance that can be 100% if leading recharging speed penalty and accuracy penalty so two debuffs here and damage then battle skill he deals cold damage enemy with a 50% chance that can be 60 if off inflicting frozen and passive when an enemy dies, the hero gains their remaining ultimate energy. So this one is really good for Goblin Lair as well. But and can inflict these two speed, these two debuffs. So it's it's good. It's really good. For that reason, I'll say it's between A plus and S. I'll say it's A plus. It's good for some of the content, but it's not great for everything. Then. We have Gardrus. Gardrus can shoot a magic crossbow bolt in this big line in a designate, designated direction, dealing cold damage to enemies between rage with a 100% chance of fleeting knock 
up and knocking back enemies to the farthest point possible. So 100% chance and more 100% chance of a fleeting stun and 100% chance of a fleeting recharging speed penalty. So you can do all of the CC with 100% chance which is great. This is amazing for PvP because on PvP CC is very important, it's gonna delay the, the, the ultimate and battle skills of the heroes, so it's really good. Then battle skill, it deals cold damage with a 75% chance, that can be 100, of attack penalty too, which is also great. As a 25% chance of immunize, they fleet the debuff, each time the hero gets immune, which has ultimate energy by 25%, also great. And has a resistance aura in all battles, 40. So this guy is really good. This guy is really good. And this one, I'm really, I really don't know. Um, I would say it's a, a plus, but I'll give him almost an S because he, he's really good on a lot of the content. But like, he's good on most of the content. But on the Goblin Lair, for example, when he pushes the enemies to the farthest point possible, it does help killing the goblins faster, so I'll say it's an A+. Plus. Then we have Ro Ro Rovena. Rovena can deal cold damage enemies with, with enraged that are not inflicted with frost and 840% uh, attack with enemies with frost with range. Then we have battle skills, she deals Call damage the enemy to lowest HP with a 70%, 75% chance of fleeting frost. And passive, she ignores the target's 20% defense when attacking enemy with fleet with frost. So she's really good with frost teams. So I I'll say she's an A, but if you are playing her with a frost team, she's A plus. Because her damage can, can be much more bigger if you are playing with a frost team. Next one, we have Balbum. Balbum, how much years we have? So we have Dalbum, yeah. Dalbum is ultimate, uses the crystal lamp from behind, dealing physical damage to all enemies with a 50% chance of fleeting blind. Battle skill, he can gain a 50% max shield for 10 seconds, he defends up for 5 seconds. And passive generates crystal armor for protection when the hero takes fatal damage in combat for the first time, gaining visibility for 5 seconds and recovering over time for 5 seconds. And got his resistance arrow, which is really great for PvP. And I've been seeing a lot of people using him on PvP, so I think he's a great hero for PvP. He also works on PV, but I'll say he's an A. A tier. Then we have Rava, so Rava, it's a bit patience. different. Rava can summon Nexus that lasts 10 seconds in the designated area, dealing this cold damage to enemies within a rage every 1.5 seconds, with a 75% chance that can be 100. Of a fleeting frost, open expiration, the Nexus will explode, dealing cold damage to enemies within rage. Battle skill, it can fire at most 3 orbs at random enemies, each dealing cold damage with a 75% chance of fleeting frost for 5 seconds. Passive skill for each enemy fleets frost on the field, the hero gains an extra 15% attack up. This effect stacks up, up to 3 times, so it can be 45%. And then increases all allies crit damage by 24% in all battles. So Rava, on most of the content, I would say is in a hay, but if you are using him with a frost team, he's like almost an S tier because he works very, very well with frost teams and he does like an amazing damage. I mean, he's gonna increase the crit damage, we're gonna get more 40 45% attack damage, so it's really gonna be great. But for most of the content, I would say he's a tier A. Next one, we have Pagbu. And sorry guys, I was recording this video, I just noticed on the middle of the video that my camera was not on. But that's okay, you still can hear me during the first part of the video. That's fine, so let's keep going. 
Next hero we have Pargo, so his ultimate he can deal cold damage 3 times, so it will be like 900, which is a lot, with a 75% chance, yeah it's not, it's, not, it's not possible to increase it, to inflict the target with 3 debuffs randomly, so you can apply one of these debuffs randomly, so it's not helpful. <laughs> So it's not helpful because we never know which uh, debuff is gonna apply. And then battle skill has a deals the cold damage and applies frozen with a 100% chance, and he prioritizes attacks on the enemies with the most debuffs. Then we have the passive when using skills to deal damage to a target fleeted with any debuff reduces the duration of the random buff on them by two seconds. So Pargo. I would say is between a B plus and A, but I'm gonna give him a hype because yeah, he's got some debuffs, some damage, and he can be useful. Next one, we have Olgan. I love Olgan, he looks amazing. I don't have him, but he looks really amazing. His ultimate, he can do Hold damage and get 25. I can get 25% attack up to frost allies. So this is really good. You can get cold damage and buff all your allies for 25% attack up, which is a lot. You can deal cold damage to an enemy if the target is flitted with frost. There is a 100% chance of flitting frozen, which is really good. Passive E for 10 seconds after being cast, it deals. It can deal. 20% attack cold damage to an enemy enemies every 1 second with a 100% chance of fleeting frost for 5 seconds too. This is great for a frost stream. And then increase all allies accuracy by 40%. This is really good and for what I've been checking, all the frost heroes they really need some kind of accuracy to apply this frost. Which is a negative thing because then you need to really invests on which stats you need on each gear, so it's not like you can invest everything on attack. Uh, and this one, I'm I'm between an A and an A+, but I'll give him in an A. He's, he's good, got some buffs, some damage, he's good. We'll say an as A. Then, next one will be... The world shall return Vorish. <laughs> Vorish. You know what will be Vorish. Vorish is the great, greatest character. He can deal damage to three enemies on all the area with a 70% of a fleeting buff prohibition, which is amazing. Then he deals cold damage on the enemy three times on dealing damage as a 50% chance of fleeting dispelling one buff from them, which is also good. And this passive heal is only with the lowest HP when dealing damage. The effect will only trigger once when dealing damage to multiple targets. So he is amazing, so just imagine with this you can inflict buff prohibition on PvP, PvE, on every character and this is really good and then he also can dispel buffs from them and then he can heal the lowest HP enemies. So this guy is great, of course he's gonna be between a S and a double S because he's so great on every content, uh, I mean will be a double S because I have him and you know guys the difference between all of them is will be always on how much utility they can provide and if you can use them on every content or not. Vorish is like an amazing character you can use him on all the PvE, all PvP content it's like this one as well for Bart but him like that's big area attacking everyone and applying buff prohibition it's like very OP especially PvP but he also works really good on PvE then please we have Elvish Elvish is really good as well it's a really good tank he can gain defense up for 10 seconds during which hero deals 75% full damage Defense, based on defense, it deals cold damage. No enemies between rage when the hero takes damage. This effect can only be triggered once every one second. Then the battle skill against shield. When the shield is broken, this spell wears off in any form, it deals cold damage. And the passive when dealing damage to an enemy has a 50% chance of leading the target with recharging speed penalty for 5 seconds, which is also good. 
And then we have the defense aura that increases all allies defense by 30% in City of Trills. This is not so good, but this is a really, really great tank. Especially if you are using a Frost Sim, but if you're not, uh, it's gonna be great as well. He's got some deep buffs, he's a good tank, his damage is applied on defense, which is great. He has defense up, so this one, I'll say, is a solid S. So, next heroes we are going to talk about will be the necrotic ones. So, we're gonna leave these ones, be going next to necrotic. And these will be the next ones we are talking about. So now we have Zadok, Ultimate, he shots 3 energy waves in a designed direction, dueling necrotic damage, battle skill he summons 1 skeleton which lasts for 15 seconds, uh, but this recharges for 10 seconds so he can have this skeleton help all the time, and when a Holy summon unit dies which has ultimate energy by 5%, which is great, and gains extra 4 attack, the extra attack stacks up to 30 times, which is like a lot. So this will be like 120% attack up, which is amazing, but I mean the fight needs to last a lot to increase his damage. I never tried the summon team, but he looks really good for a summoning team. And just for this passive I'll say he's, in, he's an A. And not a B. So, necrotic damage. So, necrotic, we have him here. Let's give him a A. Next one, we have. We I have Casta. It's a support. Casta, so ultimate, she can jump towards an enemy, dealing a lot of necrotic damage, stealing 30% of their ultimate energy, and link the hero by 475% attack. She should be really good for um, PvP. Trust toward the enemy at the lowest HP, dealing the quartic damage with a 75% chance of leading attack penalty. That can be 100%. Passive, she can grant recovery over time to all allies for 10 seconds every time an enemy dies, so this is also good. And she can increase all, attack, all allies' attack by 30% in Grand Gladiator's Arena, so yeah. She's amazing for PvP and she's kinda meh <laughs> for PvP. She's not that great, but for PvP she's really good. For PvP, not so great. So she is only single target. I would say she's like a tier S for PvP. But for PV I think she's more like an A or A plus. Maybe in an A, but for PvP I'll say she's like a S tier. Next we have as as Tia. So Tia, she please. is really good. Tia can grant visibility and debuff immunity to all range allies. She can deal damage and has if you use some scrolls, there's no no with scrolls she has a 85% chance of attending elite prohibition, which is good, not great. She can heal the ally with the lowest HP and allies with invisibility for a lot. Each ally can heal one time per cast, which is good. And she can free invisibility to the hero for 5 seconds when taking damage higher than 10% of the max HP. In addition, allies under visibility take 15% less damage. So, when she uses the ultimate, she's gonna grant invisibility and debuff immunity to all ranged allies. And with the passive, they're gonna take 15% less damage. And she also has an accuracy in dungeon battles of 50%. So she's really good, especially on Grave of Root. She's good in a lot of content. And for those reasons, she can heal, she can give some buffs, debuffs, and has aura. So for that reason, I'm going to say she's an S. Then. We have the next one, Isitarian. Isitarian is also a summon unit. He can unleash a fireball at the enemy, dealing damage. Then the Dragon Remnant fires another fireball at the enemy. Afterwards, the Dragon Remnant will prioritize attacks on the enemy. He can grant 15% attack up to all allies. 
for 5 seconds, prioritize the Dragon Remnant as a target and when doing so, grants 30% attack up for 5 seconds instead. And the passive is, as a battle starts, summons a Dragon Remnant to assist in the fight. And this Dragon Remnant deals AoE damage, so it looks very good. And also very fun to play, but I never played with him and it looks basically just damage, you can give 15% attack up to allies for 5 seconds but still I'm not sure if he's great, maybe in a summon team will be amazing but since I'm not sure about that I'll give him an A as well then we have Joyce. Joyce can summon a fortune phantom and the designated location for 45 seconds and to three fortunate phantoms so we can summon a lot of phantoms his battle skill can deal damage to the enemy at the lowest hp when there is a fortune phantom summoned by the hero on the field it will cast the same skill and deal necrotic damage his passive the hero is solely can to his summoned units when a summoned unit gets a buff hero gets the same buff which is really great and it can increase all his crit damage by 30 percent in the dungeon battles so this one will be uh, a it's not hard to choose. Where is Sim? Is here. A. Another A. Then we have Zarwat. Zarwat is a really good unit. He can summon the prisoner designate the location for 5 seconds, dealing damage to enemies within rage. With a 35% chance of inflicting fear, he can heal. Uh, during this time, he's gonna heal all the allies. At the meantime, each enemy hit by this skill increases the healing by 15%. So imagine PV, PvP, the more enemies the better, the more healing. Passive skill, you can deal necrotic damage with a 50-75% chance, that can be 100% of a fleeting charging speed penalty. Passive, every fourth basic attack kills the ally with the lowest HP with a 100% chance of fleeting silence on the enemy. And he got this increasing is our increasing all allies attack by 424 in all battles. So this guy looks amazing. I'd love to have him, but I don't. Hopefully one day I'll summon him, but he's going to join our Varish on SS tier. Next one we have Irma. Irma can deal damage based on defense, which is good. She looks a good tank. To enemies within range, she can grant control immunity and damage reduction to all allies, which is good on PvP and PvE. She can deal necrotic damage to enemy and gains hit recovery. And passive, she has a 30% chance of charging the hero's ultimate energy by 5% when taking damage. So she's, if she's gonna be the tank, she's gonna take damage all the time. And this effect can only be triggered once every 5 seconds. So she looks really good. And I think she works in all of the content, if not, she can work in most of the content, if not all the content. And for that reason, for that versatility, I think she'll be Na+. Plus. Next, we have Stella. Stella can cast, looks like a healer, and she can cast a spell for 6 seconds grants healing by this percentage to the hero and by this percentage to the ally with the lowest HP during the period. And she prioritizes healing to the ally without full HP, so she can heal like a single target. She can heal a single target each time, so I don't really know how this works, if she's gonna heal like one after each other or if she's just gonna heal one character till the f his full HP and then I don't really know but she looks good then she can grant the buff immunity and if I sub to an ally for 5 seconds and the skill prioritize all is marked by the hero so you can mark the characters which is good marks ally with the lowest HP at the start of the combat increasing their received healing and shield by 25% so you can just mark your squishy target and she's gonna keep him safe, which it looks good, and she can increase all allies max HP by 30% in City of Thrills. So she looks good, but I never used them. Uh, I never used her, I don't know if she's that great, 
and for that reason I'm just gonna give a A. Then we have Gladrus. Gladrus has an aura of 50% resistance in arena. His passive when ally with the shield is afflicted with control dispels their shield for an immunity to the control. Battle skill can deal damage with the eye onto the enemy with the highest attack with a 70% chance of stealing 25% of their attack for 5 seconds. The soul attack is kept at 50 of the hero's attack, so this 75 can be 100%. And ultimate can grant a shield to the each ally within range for 10 seconds. Any ally under this shield gains a buff immunity during the shield duration. I mean, this guy looks good for people with shields, but that's it. And for that reason, is going to be an A. Next and last, we have Devrik. Devrik has an accuracy aura of 40% in all battles. The passive, when the hero hits an enemy with a skill, has a 30% chance of dispelling one buff from the enemy. Battle skill launches three attacks at the enemy, dealing necrotic damage with a 50% chance of leading accuracy penalty, and this can only reach 60. And ultimate, ultimate selects up to three enemies to launch three attacks, each dealing necrotic damage with a 50% chance of leading attack penalty too, and this can only reach 60, which is not that great. But he can apply some debuffs, attack penalty, accuracy penalty. It has a, like a chance. It's not 100. And since it's not 100, that's why I'm gonna give him an A. Alright guys, now we are going to check the Radiance Heroes. So, it's the next ones. And let's start with Edju. So Edju is the first one. Radiance and Storm Heroes are the ones I'm investing. And I'm not been enjoying so much because I don't have the best heroes as well. The best ones are, are always the legendary ones, but let's have a look to these epic guys. They also have some of the best heroes. So, ultimate jumps to the target area dealing radiant damage to the enemies within range. If the area is rally, rally, when unleashing the skill, consumes rally and decrease the damage by 50% damage. Then, Battle skill launches two attacks on the target, each dealing radiant damage. The second attack restarts all hero's ultimate damage by 20%, and there's a 50% to grant hero rally for 10 seconds. And passive, there's a 50% chance of granting rally to the random ally for 10 seconds. So, I mean, it does some damage, but it's not amazing. It can increase the damage by 50%, here you can get ultimate energy. I mean, for me, I would give him uh for me I would give him a D. So let's find him his ear B. Next one we have Martina. Martina, she's good, she's good. I've been using her and I like her. She deals damage on this area. If the hero has rally, when unleashing the skill it consumes rally and has guaranteed to deal a critical hit and ignores 40% of the enemy's defense, which is really great. I've been using her with Laurentel and she's really great. She deals radiant damage to surrounding enemies, guarantees a critical hit if two or more enemies are hit and then gains rally. This is also very good on some of the content. And when gaining rally, the hero recharges ultimate energy by 20%. This effect can only be triggered once every 0.5 seconds. Martina, she's really good, she's great. I have no doubts, I mean, she does an amazing damage. And she's a uh, tank, a bit... A bit... It, she has good defense stats. But that's all, guys. That's all. She can't cast any debuffs or buffs or debuffs. And for that reason, I think she's only a tier A. Here I for her. Next one, we have Garius. So Garius, everyone likes Garius. Garius is a really good character. He has a defense aura in all battle battles. Passive when taking damage, he has a 50% chance to gain one sack of defense up permanently. 
The status is unspellable, so this is OP and can be stacked up to 20 stacks. So this is a lock. This guy is like a huge tank. In all the battles like PV, PvP, it's, it's so hard to kill. He's always the last one that stays there, keep healing himself, keep dispelling all the debuffs. And then battle skill he deals riding damage to enemy with a 100 chance to knock up the target and grants it recovery. So he's got like this amazing huge defense and then he can heal himself. Last one dispels all debuffs from the hero and heals all allies, so he's by 600% defense, so he heals a lot and he is a great tank, he's one of the best ones. I'm using him all the time and for that reason I'll give him S+. Plus. You can use him on all of the most of the content, he's really good. It's unlucky that he can't uh, apply any debuff, but he's really good and can be used in most of the content. Next one, we have Kamari. I don't have Kamari, but I wish I had. Because Kamari is a really good one. He resurrects a recently dead Ali at 60% of their max HP, retaining 75% of resurrected Ali's, ultimate energy before death and granting them defense up to for 10 seconds, so he resurre resurrects him and makes sure he stays alive. Heals the ally with the uh, lowest HP and grants them defense up to for 10 seconds if there is no dead ally. Then, battle skill, he charges towards the enemy with a 100% chance of knocking up the target and dealing radiant damage. And then, passive, when a battle begins, grants defense up to all allies. So, this one, this, this passive is really good, especially in PvP, because it's like the, the PvP battles, sometimes they are very quick and really depends which, which one is the first one to attack and to get some buffs or debuffs, so this is really good. And for those reasons, I'm gonna give you, where is him, an S. Next one, we have Clovis. I have Clovis. Clovis is really good as well, it's a bit different from Kamari. He rams into an enemy, dealing radiant damage and reducing their ultimate energy by 20% with a 100% chance of the attack penalty, so he's a really good tank. There is a 74 chance of taunting enemies for 5 seconds, gaining defense up to. It's good. Passive, the Urgans 1 stack of persistence for each enemy that is nearby, up to 3 stacks, so he can get up to 30% defense. And he has a defense hour up in all battles. And all these skills give him a TRS for sure. He's really great, he has some buffs, he, he has the buffs. He has a good power up in all the battles, so he's really good. The Elven Tower is Next one, we have Nessa. I don't have Nessa, but she is good. She flashes to the target and slashes at them twice. The first slash deals 300% attack to the target with a 100% chance of flitting blight for 10 seconds. The second slash deals radiant damage with a 100% chance of a fleeting healing prohibition. I wish I had this hero because I need so much. Uh, Lightning or Radiant hero with healing provision finally returns to the hero's original location. Battle skill throws a dagger if they can attack penalty on the enemy. So, <laughs> and again, you can if she can inflict healing provision, attack penalty. It's the two things that I'm lacking the most in my team. Damage to the target, slash them to deal Radiant damage. Passive, when the O hero skill deals damage, enemies with debuffs reduce their ultimate energy by 15% chance and decrease all allies attack by 24% in all battles. She's really good, wish I had her and I'm gonna give her a tier S because she looks really amazing. Next one we have Tatlin. I have Tatlin I think, I'm not sure if I have Tatlin. <laughs> so he launched 3 attacks to the enemies hitting rage, each dealing radiant damage. If the hero is rally, when casting the skill it consumes rally and grants 20% attack up to all rally heroes, so he's really good with the rally team. He deals damage to enemy while recharging a rally alley with 10% ultimate energy. Then passive, every 6th basic attack grants rally <coughs> alley with rally. And aura increase all allies crit damage by 30% in arena, so <coughs> this guy works really well with the rally team and he can apply some buffs on your team and also 
you can recharge the ultimate energy. Every 6 attack, basic attack, you can grant rally to another rally. So it looks good and also gives this crit damage aura. It looks good. And for that reason, it's gonna be a A+. Plus. Next one. The moonlight is by we have Alvis. Alvis looks really good. My path. Looks really good and is a support. He grants these all these buffs, 50% attack up, crit rate bonus, crit damage up as, uh, bonus, and if there is a rally while casting, consumes rally and grants above buffs to another ally. So he can grant these buffs to two allies. Then battle skill, he can deal damage to enemies using rage with a 40% chance of granting rally to the ally with the highest attack. And passive, when carrying no rally, the hero will duplicate rally if any ally on the battlefield gains rally. And he has this very nice aura of 24% attack in all battles. For this reason, it's basically a support, he only gives buffs, he deals almost no damage and is really good in a rally team. If it's not rally team, he's not so good. And for that reason, I think he's just an A. Maybe a A plus if it's a rally team or S, but in general, will be a a an A. Next one we have Gitona. Gitona, she's the ultimate, deals radiant damage to enemies within rage. If the hero has rally, when casting the skill consumes rally to deal extra true damage. So true damage in a rally team. For it's at 8 seconds after being cast, each basic attack deals an extra radiant damage. And passive when the hero gains rally, flash to the furthest enemy dealing radiant damage to dead them. This skill only affects once every 5 seconds and increase all crits damage by 24% in all battles, this is the aura, she looks good, especially for PvP, and again, if it's a rally team, she will be amazing, I don't have her as well, but since she's not so versatile, I'm gonna give her an A. Next one, we have... We have our beautiful Katarina. I use her a lot. She heals allies with 10% targets max HP and 2500% enlightenment and grant them the buff immunity. If you have a lot of enlightenment on this hero, it can heal a lot. She can heal the ally with the lowest HP by with the battle skill and grant them a defense up. She, this is really good. Sometimes she can save my heroes when they are almost dying with this battle skill. And when the ally's HP is fully restored, 50% of the overflowing healing from the hero is converted to a shield. This is really good because when you are healing all your team and one or two heroes are almost full HP, that HP is not thrown away, so she's gonna use that HP so that HP will be converted to a shield. So everyone will get something. They'll get HP. If they are full HP, they'll get a shield. So. This is really good, and for this reason, I'm gonna give her A+. Next one, we have Dueling. Dueling grants ally protection to allies within rage for 10 seconds and gains defense up to and recovery over time. Ally protection means he's gonna absorb some of the damage taken by the targets, or, or, and this means by the allies. He can deal damage to enemies using rage with a 75% chance of a fleeting taunt and attack penalty on the battle skill and passive they retakes 1% less damage for every 3% HP lost. And defense, and then this aura increases all allies defense by 30% in Grand Gladiator Arena battles. So this guy, he looks good for PvP, I don't have him, but he can give some buffs. A debuff here with the scroll he's gonna give 70% chance and taunt as well. According to the skills, I'm gonna give him a uh, A. Most of them they are an A. I think some of the ones I have on A+, plus, like the first three for example, I think they will be like a S, S at least. But I need to give them a try and then I'll see if I change my mind. The then we have Goom. Goom is a free character for everyone if you do the Fame Ender uh, until 60. On 6 you can get this hero for free. And it's a Radiant hero, he can launch 3 attacks to enemies using Rage. 
which enraged with a 30% chance of athletic stun for 5 seconds. Then, battle skill deals riding damage to enemies with an enraged with a 70%, 75% chance of athletic blind and attack penalty 1 for 5 seconds. Uh, can be 100%, but is attack penalty 1, so can only reduce attack by 25% chance if was attack penalty 2 would be much better. Passive, when inflicting a debuff on an enemy, there is a 30% chance of, of dispelling one debuff from a random alley. Increase all alley's resistance by 40 in all battles, which is good. Ok, so it does few damage, not that much, I have already tried him, it does some damage. Uh, if it's attack, this attack penalty, but it's not attack penalty too, so it's not that great. And for that reason, I'm just gonna give him an A. He could be better if it was like an attack penalty too, if he did more damage. But it's not that great. There are better characters to replace for him. And I think that's all for Radiant. Next, we're going to Storm. Some Storm. We start with Shagrol. So Shagrol, I've been seeing a lot of people using him on PvP and he looks great. I think he's a, a great character in some of the content, like Vortex, it should be really good with the right set and right gear, I think would be great on PvP as well, but let's check him. He leaps toward the enemy and makes 5 slashes with each slash dealing lightning damage, killing the enemy with this skill will grant the hero 40% attack up for 10 seconds. And this skill is contains a basic attack, so you know that set. There are a set that can increase a lot his damage. Then he leaps at the enemy with the lowest HP and launches attack dealing lightning damage. And basic attacks have a 25% chance to attack twice. Increase all allies' attack speed by 24% in all battles. So he's really good if you use the right set on him. I think will be he will be like amazing. And but he's only a single target, and I will give him like an S. Uh, I still need to, to try him, but for this reason, I'm gonna keep him on an A+. Plus. Then, we have Sh Shalter. Uh, Shalter ultimate in SL Ali enhances all allies with lightning force, granting them blessings of thunder. Blessings of thunder, you, they, gain a, they, they gain a chance to deal additional damage. When launching basic attacks, all allies with Blazing of Thunder have a 30% chance of summoning a lightning strike on the enemy. Dealing derivate lightning damage, Dauntless. Heroes have a double chance of triggering this effect, so it's really good with Dauntless enemies, uh, with Dauntless heroes. Battle skill grants a lightning shield and 15% 15 uh, attack up to an ally for 5 seconds. Lightning shield deals derivate lightning damage on every enemies every 0.8 seconds and passive Basic attacks have a 30% chance of releasing chain lightning to deal lightning damage to enemies. Each lightning chain can bounce 4 times among enemies at must. So this hero I think will be great with Dauntless, um, with Dauntless heroes. I've already tried him with Suta because Suta is also Dauntless and it'll really increase a lot the damage of my Suta. But that's all, he only increased the attack um, of the Dauntless. Uh, dauntless heroes but he doesn't have any buff or debuff and for this reason for not being so versatile i'll give him a, an a next one we have lydia lydia is a tank she can control grant control immunity to all allies and unleash the battle skill once the battle skill gains immortality for five seconds and attack speed up two seconds and Passive, every 5th basic attack she can grant a shield to the hero and a 10% shield to the ally with the lowest HP. So she's she's a good tank, but that's it. She's good if you want some control immunity um, to be immune to all control. Like on PvP she'll be good if the enemy team is full of CC. But she's not that versatile. For PvE I don't think there are much better tanks you can use. And for that reason, she will be just an A. <laughs> then we have Lola. Lola is a support. The ultimate summons lightning strike to the, to the target area three times. She does lightning damage. Each time to an enemy is within range with a 50% chance that can be 75. 
of a fleeting silence and 75% chance that can be 100 of a fleeting attack penalty 2. Attack penalty 2 is the one we want. Then battle skills she fires 2 lightning orbs with a 50% chance of fleeting silence and that's it and she does some damage. Passive when attacking enemies in their silence there's a 40% chance of changing silence into stunned so if they are stunned prevents the tower from launching basic attacks, so it means if they are silenced they can't use, can't use skills, if they are stunned they can't do anything basically. Then attack aura she increases all allies attack by 24% in all battles. So she's really good, I've been using her, um, that's why I'm gonna give her a, a plus, but she's really good especially on PvP because she gives a lot of CC to the enemy team. The silence is really good, if it's converted to stun, even better, and she has the attack penalty, the aura attack, she's very versatile, you can use him her in a, a lot of places. I think she's almost an upgrade of Urina. I'm not gonna say it's an upgrade because Urina can dispel uh, buffs on the enemies, and she can't. And that's it. Next one, we have Turnus. Turnus jumps up and strikes an enemy dealing lightning damage for the next X seconds when I launch a basic attack against this enemy there is a 50% chance of additional dealing lightning damage to them. Then deals lightning damage to the enemies it enraged they gains 50% attack up for 10 seconds when hitting 3 or more targets with this skill. Then the hero gains an extra 20% attack for every dumpless ally on the team this effect is kept at 3 stacks so this means if you have a dumpless team is it can get until 60% extra attack speed, which is a lot. And then it can increase all allies attack by 30% in dungeon battles. So this guy, it looks really good for a Dauntless team. But besides that, I think that's all. If you don't have a Dauntless team, it will not be so much versatile. And for that reason, it's going to be an A. Next one, we have Nakuk. I have Naguk, and he's good in some of the content. He can deal damage to all enemies, which is amazing when we have some characters that do damage in all the area, it's amazing. And he's standing the range of the static field to the entire battlefield for 12 seconds. He gains a shield for 10 seconds and defies up. And he can create a static field around here that continues, continuously do damage. And upon attacking damage from the static field every 10 times, the, the static field every 10 times, an enemy has a 100% chance of being refleet with stunned. So with this, plus this, plus this and this, you're gonna, uh, gonna stun the enemy, the enemy team. Especially on PvP, I've been using this guy, like creating a CC team. And this guy with Lola, they are amazing. It's C Perma CC. He's really good for PvP, but that's that's all for PvP. I don't think he's so that so that's great. And for that reason, I think it's just an A. Next one, we have Ilui Katl. Ilui Katl. He looks really really good. He grants defense up two to allies. It's in rage, so he can grant defense up to, to all the allies if they are in this area and heal allies with HP below 50% within range. So this guy he can apply defense up and heal the team near him. So it's already two things he can do with ultimate skill. Then battle skill, he can deal damage to the enemy and he removes all of their shields with a 50-75% chance that can be 100 of dispelling one buff from them. So we can do damage, it's gonna remove the shield from their team and dispel one buff from them. Three things in the battle skill. Then passive, when Ali casts an ultimate skill, the hero grants shield to them for five seconds. So when your Hallies are casting <laughs> ultimates, he's gonna keep buff giving shields to everyone. And then he's got this defense aura of 24%. So this guy, he looks really, really good. I never tried him. But I think he's gonna be between an A plus and S tier. But I'll start with an S tier because he looks really good, and I I think he, he is really great. Then we have Nimbus. Nimbus, I have him. I've tried him. 
with the better of the better gears and ultimate he can lock an enemy for 2 seconds during each time a missile is launched at them each dealing lightning damage, the lock on the rest is affected by heroes attack speed, each 1% extra attack speed increases the duration up to 6 seconds. Then the battle skill deals damage, lightning damage to the enemy, everyone's extra attack speed gained by the hero grants 1% damage bonus to the skill, and then passive skill the hero gains attack speed up to, when obtaining a buff. And he's got this attack by 30% in dungeon battles. He looks okay, I mean he it does it does some damage that's that's true it can do some damage he has this hour on dungeon battles but that's all it it doesn't do anything else is a dauntless one with dauntless teams maybe it can be a little bit more boost on his damage but it doesn't apply debuffs shields or anything it's just damage and for that reason i think he is just a b next one Next one we have Voltuk. I have Voltuk. I think I'll be. I should invest more on him because his ultimate he deals some lightning damage to enemies with a 50% chance to dispel one buff from them. It can reach 75. And then if enemies don't have any buff after three armor strikes, the skill has a 75% chance to inflict. If not 100, attack penalty one and accuracy penalty two. So this is good, two debuffs in one skill. Then, battle skill we can get the gun defense up and deals lightning damage to enemies within range. Meanwhile, gains a shield, so we can get the shield, we can get defense, it do damage. And passive for each buff on the hero, the hero gains extra 15% accuracy and 15% defense up. This effect can have the stacks up to 10 times. So we can get like a lot of accuracy, a lot of defense up but he needs to have buffs and then resist an hour on City of Trials so the hour is not so good because it's only on City of Trials but this passive is really good the thing about this passive is you need to have someone buffing him to stack this so you don't have buffs you'll not be able to stack this so there are some content that you need the right heroes and some of them they can't give buffs to each other so his damage and everything really depends on the team you have. I think he could be like an A+, plus, but I'm gonna give him an A because it really depends on the team for his passive, because his passive is amazing, his battle skill is really good, his ultimate also, but I'm gonna give him an A for now. Then, we have one more, we have two more, it's not the LHR. So, Nathaniel. We have Nathaniel. Nathaniel deals damage to enemies within range and grants a shield and defense sub to all allies. For each enemy hit by the skill, the shield decreases by 10%. So, look, this guy, he does damage, he gives a shield, he gives defense up and increases the shield if it's also the enemies. What do you want more? <laughs> he buffs, he does damage, he gives a shield, he does a lot, just one with one skill. Then, if it's not enough, his battle skill, he can dispel one debuff from Hallows within range and grants them one stack of recovery of time. So, he dispels one debuff and also gives one buff on the same skill. Passive, when a buff expires or it's dispelled from a mini target, the field heals the Halle with the lowest HP by 5%. And then Aura increase all allies HP by 24% in all battles. So this dude is a really amazing support. He can give like a huge support to everyone. He can do damage, shield, buffs. He's amazing. And for that reason, I think he deserves an S tier. Then, and lastly, we have Shock. I don't have Shock, but I've been seeing him. He looks strong, he can deal some damage, honor. he can deal lightning damage to enemies within rage, dispels all of their shields with a 75% of league attack penalty, he, that can reach 100%, and a chance of a fleeting recharging speed penalty opens us fully, dispelling their shields. So if they are shields, they're gonna have recharging speed penalty as well, and attack penalty too, which is great. Then we have battle skill, shuts 3 arrows at the enemies, each dealing 
lightning damage with a 75% chance of reducing their ultimate energy by 5%, and passive they regain 10% ultimate energy when enemy gains a buff. This skill only affects once every 5 seconds. And then he can increase accuracy by 40 in all battles. He's look he looks really good, I never tried him, I've seen him on PvP and he looks really strong because when I start using my buffs on my team, his, his ultimate, his skill bar speeds up and uh, he dispels any shields that I have and then he's gonna apply those debuffs on me, <laughs> which ones I don't like, but I think he's a really good on PvP, on PvP also maybe um i mean he attacks on a this small area but that's good and then battle skill is a single target but for now i'm gonna give him an a so that's all for storm and we just have one more element to talk about and that one is fire fire we're gonna start with Oros. we have Oros. Orhus is a really good tank. His ultimate he stops attacking and unleashes a battle cry forward with a 100% chance of dotting enemies within a range and dealing <coughs> fire damage based on defense. Gains damage reduction, hit recovery, then the battle skill he deals fire damage to enemy with a 75% chance of the attack penalty too. And then when attacking taking damage he has a 50% chance of turning a shield. And passive increase all allies HP by 24% in the battles. Everyone has been using this tank and everyone knows this tank is amazing. So he clearly deserves an S tier. Then we have Brody. Brody, it really depends on where you are using. So his ultimate dispels shields of enemies within range and then deals fire damage, then gains defense up. Battle skill deals fire damage enemies within range with a 50% chance of inflicting attack penalty too. And passive when enemy obtain a shield, they will also gain shield, which equals to 50% chance of the enemy 50% of the enemy's shield up to 80% of the hero's max HP. So if you are fighting against someone, especially bosses or PvE content that they they buff themselves with a the shield. Is really amazing, but if not, he's not so great. He's good, but not so great in other content, just the, that content where you can find some enemies with shields. And for that reason, he, I'm gonna give him an A. Next one, we have Dane. I've been seeing a lot of people using Dane, so let's check why. Dane has a 75% chance, that can be 100%, to dispel 2 buffs from enemies within rage, dealing damage with a 75, that can be 100, of if leading a that penalty, and when the targeting enemies with HP below 50%, steals all their buffs instead. So, he can apply, he can dispel buffs on the same skill, he can do damage, he can uh, apply debuffs, so. Amazing ultimate. Battle skill, he deals fire and damage to enemies within range. When dealing damage to enemies within, with HP less than 50%, has a 75% chance of leading fear for 3 seconds and dealing prohibition for 5 seconds on them. Passive, when the hero deals damage to enemies with, with less than 50% HP by skills recharge, ultimate energy by 15. And has this attack by 30% on in city of trills. So, he's really good on Goblin Lair, uh, I don't have him, but he looks good, and especially on Goblin Lair, on some of the PvE content, I think he works pretty well, especially when the boss is below 50%, he's gonna do more, more, more stuff. So, for that reason, and that is more versatile, I'm gonna give him an S. Then... What we have next, Alfie. We have Alfie. Alfie is beautiful for wall teams because he can summon a Nexus that lasts for 15 seconds in a designated area, and this Nexus increases the rate of wall checks made by allies within the Nexus by 50%. His battle skill deals damage, ignoring 35% of enemy's defense. Passive, each successful wall check by allies granted an extra 10% tank 
attack up to the hero permanently. These effects suck up, up to 10%, 10 times, so can be 100%. And this aura attack by 30% in dungeon battles. So, this passive is really good, but his ultimate doesn't do any damage, it's just his battle skill, and this battle skill is single target. He sh will be very good with wild, a wild team, because he can increase by 50% their checks and decrease their damage. But, I mean, it's not that versatile, he only works well with wild teams, and for that reason, he's going to be a tier B. Next one, we have Folly. Folly, let's check Folly, he's a wild as well. She deals fire damage to the enemy, uh, it's a single target, open the successfully I will check, the hero casts this skill again on a random enemy, it can be cast up to 3 times in a row. Battle skill for 7 seconds after casting, the number of orbs shot by the hero basic attack is modified to 2. Battle skill, each successful wall check by the allies increases the damage of the hero's next basic attack by 60 and makes it well. Increase all allies crit damage in by 24% in all battles. Again, she looks great if she's if you are using her with a wild team. If not, I don't think she's that great. If you are not using with wild team, I think she's not that versatile. And for that reason, I'm gonna give her a B. Next one, we have Fira. Fira. Fira can deal damage on this big area. Two enemies within range with a 75 chance of dispelling two buffs that you can increase to 100%. So she does damage, she dispels two buffs and can apply a accuracy penalty to with a 100% chance if you apply some scrolls. Three things. Then battle skills, she deals damage. If the enemy doesn't have any buff, there's a 75% chance of thinking buff prohibition and you can increase it to 100. So she's gonna dispel two buffs from them and then she's gonna apply buff prohibition because she took all the, the buffs from them. And then the passive guns increase resistance based on the total number of debuffs on all enemies. So she's gonna apply 3 debuffs on them and gonna, is gonna get resistance with that. So she looks really good and I think she will work very well with some teams if you have a lot of debuffs she will be amazing and she can increase resistance by 40 in all battles which is good in must in some of the PV content and for that reason I think she's really good and I'm gonna give her a tier S. Then we have Tonalman. We have Tonalman. Tonalman is a wild unit. He gains 20% attack up for 10 seconds and deals fire damage to the target 5 times. It's a single target. Wields the double blade dealing fire damage to the target triggered 3 times. Dire the number difference between the buffs on the hero and the target. Dire are, are the damage. He has these wild checks, where he can, in, um, with a basic success rate of 30%, happens to casting a skill, increase the damage by 120, and the hero can gain a disaster 20% crit rate. Each successful wild by Alice grants 5% crit damage to the hero. This effect can stack up up to 20 times. So, this guy gets 20% crit damage, the crit rate, and then he's gonna get 5% crit damage for this amount of times, so this means it's gonna get like 100% crit increased crit damage, which is good. I think it looks alright, but for PvE content, I've, I've seen him in PvP, he can do a lot of damage. On PvE, if it's a single target, I think he's gonna do well, but otherwise, he's not so much versatile, and for that reason, I'm gonna give him a tier A. Next one, we have Karaman. Karaman is a good guy. Karaman charges at the enemy, dealing fire damage, ignoring 30% of the enemy defense. Again, the same wall check. Battle skill flash behind the enemy to lowest HP, dealing fire damage, and selects that enemy as a target. When the hero kills an enemy, the skill resize time resets and gains 50% attack up and attack speed or open the hero performs a civil wall all check and increase all allies crit damage by 30% in arena. So this guy for PV I don't think is that great. It's still a single target as well but I don't think it does so much damage as, as this one. So this one will be better for PV and this one is not so good for PV but still it looks really great for PvP. I've been using him on the rotation teams 
and he's really good on PvP. He jumps behind the characters, the enemy team, and just kill the like the squishy ones. So he's really great. But still, since he's not so much versatile, uh, I think I was just gonna give him an A. So we are we are reaching to the end. We are almost there. Just three more. And let's see, we have Isold. I don't have Isold. Isold. Let's have a look. Isold deals fire damage to the enemies within range. With a 75% chance of elite attack penalty, we can increase to 100. Meanwhile, we're going to chill to allies. So, she plays, she does damage, she applies attack penalty, she gives a shield to allies. Then we have the battle skill, she deals fire damage and grants defense step to allies again. So, she's gonna give a debuff, she's gonna do damage, she's gonna give a shield to your allies, a buff of defense up, damage again, and then passive skill, shield granted by the hero reduce allies damage taken by 15, so she's gonna reduce the damage your allies are taking as well, and she has a defense aura in all battles, so clearly she is an S tier. Let's go, let's do, we have Adolphus, Adolphus, Adolphus deals far damage to enemies within range and grants a shield to all allies, so it gives a shield and does damage, that's good. Then battle skills she can grant a shield to the ally for 10 seconds increasing their ultimate energy, this is good. And if the target already has a shield when the hero grants them a shield, additional heals them equal to 70% of the shield granted, so this is good, it looks great but it doesn't have any buffs or debuffs it does a, a slightly amount of damage, it depends if you invest in some enlightenment I think it will be good but I never tried him he looks a solid character but I'm not sure how good it is so for that reason he, I'm gonna give him an A Don't you like it? Liku Liku is the next it's one delicious. and last one Liku she deals damage to enemies within range with a 100% chance of flinting buff prohibition. Without needing to apply any scrolls, you get damage, you'll get buff prohibition, and if the hero has any buffs, they have a 100% chance of dispelling one buff on the targets. Amazing. Battle skill shields the ally with the lowest HP and grants ally defense up. And passive, she grants a courtesy up to the hero if they don't have any buffs, otherwise grants them resist up. So she's gonna give a lot of buffs. She can heal, she's gonna do damage, she's applying buff prohibition, and lastly, she's gonna apply accuracy on this, uh, on the, in the arena, which is good, and I think she's really good, I never used her, she looks great, and I'm gonna give her an A+. So this is it guys, we have here our final tier list, you can check the tier list, I'm gonna leave the link below, so you can go to this website with my link and check this tier list. If you don't agree with some of the choices I made, just leave the, your comments below. And you can also go to this website and vote. And together we can work on this and create a better tier list we can. And this is going to help all the community that plays this game and that is really great. So to finish this video, I hope you like this video. I hope this helped you a lot and makes it easier for you to discover which are the strongest epic heroes on this game. So I hope you liked this video, if you liked it don't forget to press that like button. If you are not subscribed don't forget to subscribe to my channel because it helps me a lot and supports more on my channel to grow. Thanks for watching and see you next time.